Hello everyone, welcome everyone to our Saturday meditation session. This is the Maryland Meditation Center. We are an online community, the place and the space for meditation lover from around the world. So wherever you are, feel free to join us on the Zoom meeting. And I believe we also have the Facebook Live as well. And every Saturday here, 7 to 8, 15 Eastern Standard Time, uh, wherever you are, feel free to join us. And if you are new to the channel, we have been providing this space since the beginning of this year. And we we are looking at at least one full year every single Saturday here 7 to 8 15 Eastern Standard Time so feel free to join us and bring anyone who may benefit from this community to join us every Saturday as well and if you like you can go back and relearn what we have learned and can practice meditation on your own pace just type in the um, I believe we have the <laughs> YouTube channel as well so Teddy can post that on the chat box so you can go back and relearn something that help you to practice meditation better and my name is Venerable Narong Chai Tana Chayo. I'm going to be your host tonight. And it is Saturday, the 16th of July, 2022. And this is the 29th episode of our programs. And it's a journey of meditation practice. It's not a one-time session. So I, me and my team, we plan to at least dedicate ourselves and our time for one full year for this community. And we can go from there. So if you ju ju just join us today, just let you know that we're going to be here, support each other. I'm going to be here meditating with you on this channel for the rest of the year. And feel free, again, feel free to join us, okay? Hello, uh, Nathan, <laughs> Macy, uh, Bindu, Elsbeth, Lisa, Linda, Ellen, Raj, Becky, uh, Lear, Sabrina, Ellen, uh, Isi, Rochelle, uh, Geraldine and Dennis. Okay, welcome Dennis. Welcome everyone. Hope the sound and the picture is okay. If uh, the 0 to 5, what is my level of my sound at the moment? 0 is lowest, 5 is good, the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I just moved into my monastery the other day ago and I'm actually living in the center of the forest <laughs> and right in my Resident is a small river just run past by where I sit right now. From here, it's about five meters. I can see the water and I can hear the water running you know, all day long. It's so relaxing, very peaceful and it's raining on and off. And this is a rainy season in Thailand where Buddhist monks throughout Thailand has to stay at one place to do what? To not only be follow the tradition that laid out by the Buddha 2500 years ago, this is the best time of the year for the monk to get back to study the teaching of the Buddha and to focus on his mind development, to practice mindfulness and to practice meditation. So we just start to uh, the other days ago and it's been a great experience so far. There is no place like this on the planet, I believe. It's, everyone is so happy and we have a better meditation experience. You know, we are getting up early we have a very beautiful sleep if we're talking about four five hours of sleep but in this forest it's very far from the village you know we're talking about four five kilometers and that is why it's quiet during the day imagine at night you know it's very quiet at night so four five hours of sleep you wake up fresh and then you can go meditate right away you know from four to seven o'clock in the morning and then after that we have breakfast and you know the rest of the day we pretty much focus on the um, uh, my development uh, we read some book and we practice meditation and this is such a beautiful uh, environment so i hope that everyone can feel that <laughs> okay so let me share with you some picture of this place and then i'll we go from there this is the uh, the place. It's in the Chiang Mai, Thailand, in the northern part of Thailand, surrounded by trees, water, and not many. I would say no human being live here. <laughs> Only a few monks we stay here in this then for the next ninety day. Okay, and it's very beautiful with the right field with the trees. And this tree is green all year round. And some monks, you know, so six monks, you know, we stay here for the next 90 days. And that's pretty much some of the picture that I want to share. And people have a very good meditation experience when they come here. For the main reason, I believe, because of the conducive environment, the surrounding, the weather, the nature, less crowded, no noise. This is very uh, recommended by the Buddha. This is very conducive place for meditation. If you expect to have good meditation experience, if you can, you find a retreat that have this kind of characteristic where it's not too far, not too close from the city, where you have a teaching monk with you, or where it's surrounded by the nature. Here, it's, you know, we don't need, no one in this village has air conditioning. They don't need it because it's cool all year round. And when Westerners come to Thailand, when they got themselves ordained, they 
make progress in their meditation a lot faster than they meditate at home. So I'm going to share with you one of the experience of one of the gentlemen. He come a long way from Canada. He practice meditation at home. He try to figure out why he cannot relax, why his mind cannot be still. And once he joined us, he became a monk. And within two weeks, you know, he said he's, he has deepened his meditation and he make progress a lot faster that he, he didn't know why, but he feel very comfortable and he can go deeper and deeper into his meditation practice. And he feel very excited and he, he tried to fi figure out what happened to my mind, what did I do, okay? One thing for sure is the environment that he stay with here, with the like-minded people, people who love to meditate. We don't talk about anything in the world. We don't have the phone and we don't have internet connection for, for the new monks to use. So if they come here, they pretty much completely disconnected themselves from the whole world and they have a chance to reconnect yourself to the inner peace within. And that is why everyone said the same thing. You know, this is just a great place to practice meditation. So let's see what Lumpy John has to say. My name is Lumpy John. I'm 24 years old and I'm from London, Ontario, Canada. Um, so I've been a monk now for, I want to say, at least a little over half a month. Um, coming into this program, I didn't necessarily know what to expect in terms of what being a monk would actually be like. Um, but I have to say, since I've partaken in it for a decent amount of time now, I'd say that it's been very, very positive for me as a person. Um, very positive for me in terms of my ability to interact with other people as well. Um, and it has exceeded all expectations as to what I thought um, I could possibly gain from it. So uh, being a monk in general, I think it's a very wholesome experience. There's a great community of people around, all very positive, all very supportive. Um, but also in terms of your own personal self-development, there's no other place like it on the planet in terms of developing mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. So um, mental, they provide lots of stimulating information, whether it be Dharma talks or whether it be just learning and asking questions from your teaching monks, um, whether it be physical in terms of we do lots of rigorous stretching, we do lots of meditation sitting every single day. So we're cultivating our bodies. Um, to be better versions of ourselves or whether it be spiritually where we participate in good deeds and we help the community and gain very, very positive, wholesome feelings from those things. So um, becoming a monk and leaving every aspect of life behind was very, very intimidating at first, but through the program, through all the support I've gained, it's been very, very easy to let go of everything. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's very cool to have this experience and it's put things into a lot of perspective for me. I see the world in a completely different way. I'll never see it in the same way I did before. Um, and in very, very positive ways, very happy ways. So in terms of my past, I used to try and be a good meditator, right? And the goal was to sort of expand my mind and expand my attention and awareness through meditation. Um, and so I had a daily practice back at home as many people are starting to uh, sort of engage in their lives. But um, there was always limitations on to sort of what I was able to accomplish in my mind because of the way that modern society is set up. Um, and so as much as I tried and I did try very diligently to be a good meditator at home, uh, there was no way that I could achieve the same level of presence. And I want to say sabai. Sabai is a feeling of calmness and peace, that which I've recently learned. Uh, I was never able to attain nearly anything similar of a state of sabai at home as I am now here as a monk. Um, that's because of many reasons, because of the teachings, uh, because of the support and also sort of the accountability that's held with the group where you all have to meditate at the same time together. And so they keep you on, It's they don't keep you on it, you can choose to do it if you want, but a rigorous schedule where it's always every single aspect of the day is designed to not only improve your meditation, but also support you in every way to make it easier. My meditation has increased uh, expansively in many, many ways in terms of how long I can sit for, what I gain from my meditation, what the knowledge of meditation actually is in uh, terms of my own personal biases. Um, so yeah, basically I never could have done these same things at home and I'm very, very appreciative and grateful for this opportunity that they've set up uh, to become a better meditator and to become a better person and find more wisdom. To some degree, uh, becoming a monk is was for my own personal self-benefit. Um, and so 
my initial goal was to come here and learn these things so that I could go back and help other people who went or who are going through the same things that I went through and was able to overcome through meditation um, by learning the things in depth and the authentic way of teaching and practicing meditation and the art of knowing yourself better so that you can be a happier, more content version of yourself. I wanted to learn the best way to go about doing that so I could come and apply that to uh, Western culture and sort of help uh, my brothers and sisters back home who are going through the same thing because you know it really is a big issue a lot of us aren't living uh, fulfilled and satisfactory lives and so now that I know these things I will be able to help other people back home in ways that I never saw it possible before um, and so that makes me very very happy very positive to do so I hope that I can absorb as much of this as I possibly can so that I can go and help out as much as I possibly can but uh, any small step in the right direction is a step in the right direction so um, could I have learned these things any other way in the same way that I have? I don't believe so. I don't think there's any other place on the planet where you can develop yourself uh, as well as you possibly can in an environment like this, which is designed strictly for the sake of giving you every opportunity available to do that. Um, and so now that I know these things, I cannot wait to go back home and hope even if one person suffers less from every single thing I've had to go through here, that will make every single second of this time worthwhile. And that is John's from Canada, as you can see. I think we can learn a lot from his story. Uh, meditation is a, is a journey of mind development. He has experienced a lot of pain before he got here. He's he looking for the solution and he noticed that people around him, friends and family members, also suffering from stress and depression and lost the purpose of life and he didn't know he didn't know how to deal with that with his own self and he seek for the solution so he came to Thailand and asked for ordination and he want to improve himself in all direction physically mentally and spiritually meditation is a part of that and he was very disciplined person person and very determined well at the moment he went back to Canada already he become a monk for about I believe four or five months and he learned a lot and he commit to the program 100% and he make a lot faster in his meditation journey comparing to when he was practicing by himself and he tried to experiment everything for example from meat eater okay have experience less and less when he have when he eat less and less meat compared to more and more vegetable uh, in that the uh, eating habit he see the big change when he turned from meat to vegetarians to vegans you know after three weeks he noticed that his body changed and he feel very light in the body he can meditate well all day long because there's no meat in the body and all of a sudden he said Lung Pi, i will stop eating meat for the rest of my life now i know that this is good for my body Physically, mentally, and spiritually, I feel very comfortable when I eat more vegetable and when I go back, I can go back to meditate right away. So this is one thing that he discovered for himself and he was very happy to find the balance of his body and of his mind. At 8 o'clock, he go exercise and he come back to the meditation room, 9.30, he sit until 11. And from 2 to 4, that's another long session in the afternoon. You know, he eat one meal a day, coming down from two meals a day to one meal a day and coming down from eating meat to 100% <laughs> no meat. And he was very happy that for his discovery, he get excited about his journey, get excited about his improvement. And now he is so happy to be able to attain that level of happiness and concentration, feel relaxed, feel energetic and ready to share this wisdom to the whole world so and that's something maybe you can relate it to I'm not here to promote ordination or to invite anyone to become a Buddhist monk that's not the goal at all I'm here to share with you the knowledge of how to meditate better and something that can help to support you okay, in your meditation journey so because of my line of work I help people ordain and become a Buddhist monk and I teach them how to develop themselves body and mind so here is just one example that I want to share with you. Hope you can relate it to that. So there are many factors that involve why we cannot stay focused during the meditation. And I got the question asked the other day from one of the brother monks that Lung Pi, I have been sitting for about two weeks by now. I still have a lot of hard time try to stay focused during meditation. So is there any tip or technique that you can share with me? So I have to come back and think about that. What happened with him and is there any, any practical way for for him to put into practice and <laughs> help him to stay focused during meditation right away. So here I'm going to share with you that five things to see if this works for you as well. Okay. So number one, um, it's about finding your meditation object because no matter what, no matter who we are, 
how long we have been sitting. The nature of human mind is a wandering object. It it will think and it think very fast. It think very far. Uh, you may stay focused five seconds. It it will go out ten minutes. It come back stay twenty second. It go out thirty minutes. And that's the nature of human mind. We need to understand the fact first that the mind is that is a thinking element. But when we meditate, we try to find the balance between relaxation and stay focused. Then the mind can stay focused in one object for a very really long, long time as we expect, right? But it's not usually the case. There is a reason why the mind cannot stay focused. Number one, do you feel comfortable with the object that you use, with whatever you try to focus on? Can be the breath, can be the mantra, can be the crystal ball, the full moon, the flower. So we have to make decision what kind of object that we are trying to to work on in this session that we want to keep the mind stay still and stay with that object of meditation. And once you select the object, okay, don't get confused. Just start from something. Can be if you if you visualize the object, do you feel comfortable? Do you try to use your physical eye to locate that object when you meditate? If you do that, it's not going to work for you because you eventually you lose focus. You have the stress and tension around your physical eye, and you feel uncomfortable, and all of a sudden you want to stop meditating. So, if you use object, make sure you don't try to look at the object with this physical eye. You need to feel relaxed. There shouldn't be any, you know, uncomfortable feeling. In your whole body, when you visualize that object, and if you use the breath, where do you focus your attention while you breathe in and out? Some people get confused because they don't know the technique thoroughly. So when they put into practice, they cannot stay focused. If you use your breath, maybe you can stay focused here between your nostril and the upper lips, and keep your attention fixed here while you breathe in and out to see if it stay here for one minute, it's still here two minute or not. Or someone just observe how the chest is rising and falling back down as they as they breathe. Okay, breathe in, expanding; breathe out, you know, contracting. Or same thing with the belly area or the around the center. When you breathe in, your belly expand. When you breathe out, your belly contract itself and stay focused there. And the other thing is, do you feel relaxed of your body before you sit? You feel tense or stress? Do you give yourself time to take a walk to have um, maybe a cup of hot water, you know, hot tea? Sit, relax first. You know, give yourself five ten minutes before you come to that long session that you're about to sit for 45 to one hour. Otherwise, you cannot stay focused because without physical relaxation, it's almost impossible for the mind to stay focused, especially for beginner. And start small. That's the third tip I suggest him. Start small means okay, you pick the object of your choice. Breathing, mantra, or visualization, you pick the object, and then start from start small. Mean you feel relaxed and give yourself maybe five minutes first to see how it goes, how your mind feel, how the body feel. In that five minute, can you stay focused? I believe most people can. Okay, not that long. If you can do that in five minutes, stay focused in whatever object that you choose. It gives you more confidence. It gives you more motivation to move on to another five minute and another ten minute. And during the day, give yourself more often opportunity to do the same thing. Grab three minute or five minute here and there to do the same thing to come back and stay focused. Maybe while you waiting, you know, before breakfast and lunch, waiting for all the friends to come, all the monks sit there instead of talking. Close your eye and come back three minutes. Come back five minutes. When you sit on the bus while going to work or after lunch, you know, in your office, you can turn off your phone and close your eye for two three minutes. Just bring your mind back. And during the day, you ask yourself question: Where is my mind now? Where is your mind at this moment? Is your mind here, or if your mind somewhere else? So if you ask this question, you know where your mind is, and when you know where your mind is, you slowly bring the mind back near the body or inside the body. One minute, two minute, three minute, it's okay, but do it often. And another one is uh, we realize that we do the chanting first before meditation. People who do the chanting first before meditate, they tend to stay focused much better than people who don't do the chanting. Because when we do 15 minutes or 30 minutes of chanting, it helps slow down the thinking process. It helps the mind to slowly come back near the body. May not be 100% to be still inside the body, but at least it's somewhere around here in the body. When we chant, when we say something, the mind is around here because we stay focused on the chanting that we are chanting. So 
you can put in this into practice uh, you can if you don't know how to chant it's okay you can some people use the music right the sound of the nature or the chanting that you, you feel comfortable you say something to keep your mind focused to slowly bring your awareness close to yourself before you about to sit I, this is very useful for most of the monks here if, if you might think a lot if you worry about a lot of things don't rush yourself to go and sit and close your eyes because you have to spend a lot of time working on that thought that worry and then you cannot stay focused so instead of rushing to go back to the cushion take a deep breath you know do the chanting first five minutes ten minutes thirty minutes during that session the mind slow down feel relaxed and after the chanting is done when you close your eye automatically without doing anything the mind stay back stay still in the center of the body and it can stay focused you know naturally you don't have to do anything okay so you can apply this if you don't know how to chant again you can use any chanting on on the youtube that you feel easy and relaxed even though you don't know the meaning but as you listen to it if it helps you to feel calm comfortable and relaxed you know you can try that or you can use the music the sound of the nature the sound of the water or the bird or anything that suit the mind to slow down the thinking process and then softly close your eye and come back to your meditation object okay so these are the five tips that help you to stay focused much better during meditation i hope that helped okay it's time for us to meditate <laughs> hope everyone is ready so the structure is usually like this in case you are new we will spend the first you know 20 minutes i'll share with you some of the wisdom or the technique that help you to meditate better and then another 30 minutes from now on okay from until seven um, so until eight o'clock we will have a quiet moment to meditate together and after that maybe five ten minutes to answer some of the questions that you have or if you like to share your experience feel free to do so at the end of this session okay all right i hope everyone is ready and get excited about this meditation uh, session it's important to get excited okay cherish your mind happiness and joy feel grateful for this opportunity and now slowly let go everything put the phone down okay drink a cup of water to warm up your body a little bit and then we can sit comfortably okay take a few good deep breaths before we sit wherever you are just do nothing but breathe in and out okay fully to see where your mind now how you feel at the moment slowly bring your awareness back to your breath and breathe in and out okay fully for a few times
welcome everyone back to our session and that was about 35 minutes okay how is everyone's doing from 0 to 10 what is your number of peace and happiness today <laughs> wow easy 10 happy for you okay Becky 9 amazing this number is amazing okay glad to see that everyone make an effort you know rush eight then it's ten <laughs> Elizabeth also eight <laughs> Nathan seven okay okay that's nice that's nice okay Peter also seven <laughs> okay no one below five you know that's you know very happy for Long P as well okay this number tell us something okay about how are we doing at the moment you may be experiencing some challenging during the meditation okay like Nathan having a back pain you know uh, some of us may have a uh, difficult to time to try to stay focused and concentration during the meditation again I like to say meditation is a journey is a journey of joy is a journey of observation every time we sit we learn something okay how to deal with physical pain how to deal with thought how to deal with sleepiness how to deal with anger so it's all about observing and adjust please observe and reflect on the way you meditate otherwise you it become a habit habit of not knowing what's going on and feel like no need to change anything okay we have to slowly adjust along the way every time you know we sit we encounter something something if you already feel you know stable with your practice you know peace and calm it's okay continue that but when thought arise what did you do when pain arrive what did you do when you lost conscious what did you do this is very important so in this 90 day journey of meditation for some of you who decided to continue practice meditation for 90 days tag along with this uh, tradition in Buddhism because like I said earlier from this 90 day the monk will not allow to travel unless something really important so we'll stay here focus and meditate every single day for 90 days even though we meditate on a regular basis already but this 90 day is special okay me and my monk's brother here we meditate four sessions a day and we're looking at at least four five hours every day and at the end of the day we make we write down something about our own experience so we can reflect on what went wrong and what went well and later on we start to see the pattern of our own mind of what happened in the early morning what happened in the late morning session what happened in the afternoon and in the evening in evening session or the late night session so we start seeing how the mind works and when we know the pattern of our own mind on each time of the day then you know it's easy for us to to just repeat we don't need to change anything and that's that's how meditation works when you find your own path own object own way of stealing the mind then you don't need to change anything just deepening that technique and you know, refine it fine-tune it you know eventually you will be surprised that your meditation make a very fast progress you know without you knowing anything or without you doing anything you just do the same thing over and over and all of a sudden uh, your meditation experience has changed and it's jump okay and as we learned from John today you know it's a journey of observation you need to make sure that you take good care of the body even though meditation is about mind training but the mind stay in the body if your body is in good shape it keeps you confident how is your eating habit what kind of food that you eat regularly how is your resting time how many hours that your body need to rest is eight hour enough or six hour enough do you have to take a nap during the day you know to, to remain fresh you need to get to know yourself how is your exercising habit how many time that you go to the gym or how, how often do you take time to exercise okay so in this night today I set go to regain my physical strength as well I will make sure that I at least you know 30 minutes of every day I need to do something with my body either taking a walk uphill and downhill non-stop for 30 minutes we have to have to get myself sweat okay get moving get the get the heart you know, beeping <laughs> uh, continuously for 30 minutes you know, to regain the physical strength and straight up you know more often during the day because we are you know uh, going to sit four session a day and at, at is uh, most of the session we're talking about one or at least one hour session is which is quite challenging if we don't exercise you know we cannot expect to have a good meditation at all
okay so reflect on that <laughs> and we are going to have a good meditation uh, journey together okay to see if any question today i saw somewhere that becky said she she mentioned uh, that she meditate every day five minutes ten minutes sometimes 45 minutes this is very good becky because like i said start small we know meditation is good okay but it's hard to keep it as a habit you start small first it gives you confidence if you feel like five minutes is easy go with five minutes and after a few days you know your inner self your intuition will telling you why sit just five minutes why don't go 10 minutes okay and if that happens then go for 10 minutes and 15 minutes okay don't come below that only keep on increasing the number of your meditation okay <laughs> okay uh, from Elspeth, I'm still new to meditation and catching up on the past video from early this year. Are there any books that you recommend for beginner at meditation? Okay, I think yes and no, Elspeth. <laughs> because when it's time to read book about meditation, okay, there are all kind of meditation technique out there that sometimes we get confused. Okay, which one is you know work for us? Which one doesn't work for us? If I stick with the Buddhist meditation technique, there are at least 40 techniques that mention okay, in the Buddhist text. And those techniques is not for everyone. You need to explore which one is work for you. But as a beginner, I would suggest you to master these two quality when you meditate. Two things. First, understand the concept of physical relaxation. Make sure you make that happen. Wherever you sit, whenever you sit, do you feel relaxed? If not, fix it. Don't allow it to be a habit of sitting in there painfully and try to be patient. It's, it doesn't work. Make sure you find a way to relax your body okay, all, every time that you sit. And the second thing, to see if you can stay awake, stay focused and stay conscious. Balance between relaxation and stay focused. You can simply start by breathing. A lot of people feel breathing is easy to start with because we don't need to any tool or, or accessory, right? Just because we breathe already. So come back to the breath. Okay. In and out, observe. Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel conscious? In one minute, can you stay there? Focus here. Okay. In and out. Where is your mind? The body relax, the mind focus. In one minute, you stay awake. You know 100% that you are here. Then move on to five minutes and move on to 10 minutes. If any time the mind gets distracted from, from the breath, do you know that, that your mind attention has moved? If you know, then bring it back and start over again and go from there, okay? But if you, since you ask for the book, okay, I, uh, let, me, let me think of the books of you know, meditation because there are many of them and uh, maybe I'll share with you next session, okay? Thank you for the question, Elspeth. For Dennis, it was raining outside my window during the meditation. I believe it's allowed me to have deep sense of relaxation. That's wonderful, Dennis. Uh, nature, okay, the sound of the nature, the ambience, the environment, these are considered a conducive factor that help us to, to calm the mind down much faster. And when the mind feels good and calm, the mind can stay still much longer. So uh, the environment does affect you know how we meditate and uh, i love meditating outside when i can i feel like i can have a deeper meditation like yes absolutely becky these are the things that mentioned long time ago the buddha suggests the monk to once he teach meditation object for each monk he suggests he point to the forest to the root of tree to the cave to the empty hut you know wherever you feel comfortable please go don't stay with me now you know how to meditate all you need is to practice by yourself so stay there find a quiet place and meditate on your own and when you run into problem or question come back and ask me later and that's how the body teach uh, the buddha teach the monk so your job is again you know if you can find from time to time the the retreat center nearby your place to join the community like this to sit relaxed by the nature or if you have a, a park you know the green area around your house you know from time to time, it's good to take a walk and sit back and relax over there. It's very energetic and very relaxing when we sit around, surrounded by the trees and the sound of the nature. Okay, so find time to do that. From Isi, I began my journey with you today. 
clean eating, exercising, meditating, journaling. <laughs> Wonderful, easy. You may be living life as a good example of how you master your meditation from day one that you meditate here and at the end of this year, you know, maybe you can come up with the books, you know, the story that you can share with the world, share with us here of how you deepening your meditation, how you get to the level where you feel very comfortable with your own practice. You can faster bring the mind back and allow the mind to stay still much longer whenever you want, whenever you sit, you know. This is this is amazing. Okay, please keep on doing this and you know later on maybe we hope to hear from you as well. Okay. Hope to hear from everyone as well. Okay. So again feel free to join us every Saturday from now on. There is no Sunday session. So start from this weekend, Saturday 7 to 8.15 Eastern Standard Time here wherever you are. Stop by and join us and uh, bring friends and family, whoever you feel like they may be benefit from this community. Okay, please invite them to join us as well so we can grow this community together. And uh, I will be here to support you, to meditate with you, to answer some of the questions that you have until the rest of the year. Okay, so please have a good one. Have a good weekend wherever you are. Stay safe, stay happy, and please keep on meditating. Okay? So see everyone again next Saturday.